Welcome to a community radio roundtable entitled Why Community Radio Matters, coming to you from WPPM LP, Philadelphia 106.5 FM, Philly Cam Community Radio. We're also live to Philly Cam TV as well, and we're streaming on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us for this special program as part of Philly Cam's PPM Fest celebrating community media as community care all month long. And I also want to make sure to mention that we are also today celebrating WPPM 106.5 FM's fifth anniversary today, October 20th. It's also National Community Media Day. So with all that said, I want to introduce this great program we have put together with some of WPPM's programmers, uh, past and present, current, uh, and, you know, Definitely hoping to keep in touch with everyone as we continue producing great radio. And uh, I love to sort of see how people's um, programs grow for the next five years. Um, so with that said, I'm going to introduce the conversation today. Again, we'll be talking about why community radio matters and specifically why WPPM has been such uh, an amazing resource for everyday people to learn skills, to produce great radio, and also connect with our neighborhoods, communities, tell stories otherwise heard, uh, excuse me, otherwise not heard on mainstream media, um, you know, making space to combat oppressive narratives, support local artists, um, and also educate our neighbors about important issues and lessons that otherwise are not being shared. So I want to thank our panelists here who have joined us today. We have a great group of programmers. We have Ray Naylor, host of Philly Folk Scene right here on WPPM. Welcome, Ray. Hey, how you doing, Allison? I'm good. It's, it's great to be with you. And we also are joined by Tara Lake, who is a special producer at WPPM. Hello, Tara. Hello. Thank you, Allison, for having me. It's great to have you. We also are joined by A.D. Amorosi, host of Theater in the Round, and uh, welcome, A.D. Thank you for having me, Allison, and uh, thank you uh, for letting me in uh, to speak with everyone else here today. Of course. And we're also joined by Tony J. Jones of Seven Figure Hustle. Welcome, Tony J. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, well, with that, we're going to sort of jump right into the conversation. I'm excited to hear you all um, share a little bit about your work and talk amongst yourselves uh, about the uh, programs that you've produced with WPPM and the lessons you've learned from that. Um, so I'm going to pose a question and, and you know, feel free to jump in. I might direct some questions to certain people first and, and we'll see where we where we go. But um, I really want to ask, just kind of starting out, what does community radio mean to you? Um, or another way of thinking about it would be, you know, why is community radio uh, specifically a good home for your program uh, or programs that you have produced? Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Ray. Okay. <clears throat> well, f number one, it's fun to do. I, uh, in 1980 to 82, I did a radio show out of Widener University. And then 82 to 84, I did a cable show out there. This is before Verizon and Comcast. And, um, I realized I liked the radio better, and it wasn't just because I could bring coffee and donuts into the station with me. Uh, it, you know, it gave me a chance to uh, play what I wanted to play, to interview local people, um, play music, pretty much uh, those reasons. Wow. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. Tara, how about you? You know, I I am a person who has always loved radio. Um, I grew up surrounded by um, exciting radio and sound um, just because of the household that I grew up in. I really love 
the, the medium because it allows us to tell stories in a way that I think really respects the listener, um, the listener's ability to sort of paint a picture along with us. So in a way, it's always a collaborative process. Uh, and I think that's a wonderful thing about working in radio. I think also just um, the potential and the, the possibilities that audio provides is really exciting. Um, and then I think also it's it's a highly accessible way to storytell. Um, I'm just a person who loves um, to tell stories and to bring people's experiences to life. Uh, so I, I think that's another reason as well. So I've always loved radio. I'm a person who certainly um, I have a, um, a, a great fondness like Ray does uh, for audio and radio over uh, over video and um, television. Uh, and, and so I, th I think that there are just some of us who are made for that medium. And um, I love working in audio. So it's been a really special opportunity. For me. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, Tony J, what do you what do you think? Well, I love radio because um, you can speak your voice, number one. Um, it gives you a chance for people to listen because now everything is radio. You can take radio with you everywhere. Um, I think radio people, you know, you have to stop and, and, and actually watch a television show or whatever. Radio is just to me is a, a, a different medium that you can um, listen to and get information, um, you know, th just through radio. So. Mm -hmm. And I, I like radio better than I like TV. Um, doing both, I prefer radio because I, I just love how, you know, the guests can come in anywhere and I, and I just enjoy radio. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely a unique medium and, and uh, you know, maybe sort of connecting to what you mentioned, Tara, um, is that it definitely, I find that it's a wonderful thing because it expects something of the listener in a way, you know, it's, it's, uh, it can be passive like TV, but, um, you know, in a, in a way with our ears, like intently, you know, the intention of, we all have the intention of really connecting with somebody just through audio, which is, you know, to, to only have that one way of speaking to somebody and really trying to, you know, connect a message, um, through just that way is, is so interesting to me. Um, AD, what about you? Uh, I started as an intern behind the scenes on radio at WXPN and wound up on live television for C WCAU uh, later on in my life and always loved the idea of getting back to what I think is radio's mysteries. Uh, you know, there are, you can develop a story uh in a, a more surprising way. And the one thing I can say about what radio offers uh, a show such as mine is because we're online, because we stream, because we have a connection to YouTube and StreamYard, uh, I can connect Philadelphia theater to the rest of the world and and the rest of the world to Philadelphia theater. And that's very valuable, I think, especially for a community that is still, after all this time, somewhat uh, either misunderstood or not quite given uh, proper credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I also see that connecting pretty closely to Ray's show as well. You know, uh, Ray, you, you've you been a huge supporter of local Philadelphia um, music. I'm sure you could also speak to that, you know. Well, that's that's uh, one of the great things about community radio. These are artists, uh, not just locally, but also uh, unlocal, that probably would never have their music uh, on TV, uh, TV or radio. I did both, actually. But, uh, and and also have the opportunity to be interviewed on the radio again, which they probably would not be able very much to do, uh, especially for a lot of people. Um, it just gives a great opportunity. And um, that's, uh, that's the one thing I really like about having the show. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. 
Well, this also is a great time, I think, for each of you to maybe talk a little bit more about your, your programs in particular and maybe give us just a quick uh, idea for folks who are just tuning in and maybe have not heard your programs, for folks who are viewing this on television and have not yet tuned in. Um, maybe we can go around and allow you to, you know, in just one or two sentences, describe what you do with your, your program or programs. Uh, Ray, you want to actually kick us off? Maybe? Okay. <laughs> well, it's a Philly folk scene, and I, I play, obviously, uh, I say folk music because a lot of things are, are considered folk music that uh, may not be in the traditional sense, but uh, singer-songwriter, song, uh, bluegrass, Americana, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I play a lot of records and a lot of radio promoters send me all their stuff for the artists that they work with. So it's hard to decide what to play for one thing. You know, if we play 30 songs in a two hour period, what do you, you know, what do you select? Mm -hmm. And I've done interviews and just about every show I've done, I've been doing this for about three and a half years. Um, and you know, something like that takes a good amount of research as opposed to just weaning it. <laughs> and, uh, but I've enjoyed those that I've talked to some really great people, including an old Paul Stuckey of Peter, Paul and Mary. I interviewed him uh, in May, this past May. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a fantastic show, and and I definitely am so glad that you've been a part of the station. Maybe also before we uh, go to Tara, you know, we should promote that you'll be having your last official episode of, of Philly Folk Scene coming up here in just a bit. My, yeah, my last show is next week. Um, I'm going to try to spend more time in my own music for one thing, but I the show will continue. Yes. Uh, two people that are friends of mine, uh, Rusty Crowell and Jan Alba. They are going to pick up the show starting uh, the first, what, Friday in November? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First Friday, in, the same time, three to five, but but on a Friday. So they're going to do a great job. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, we're excited. Um, yeah, well, so Tara, tell us about your specials on WPPM. You've been um, really, really um, exploring so many uh, wonderful stories um, through audio. So please. Yeah, thank you so much, Allison. Uh, yeah, I'm a specials producer here at WPPM. Uh, what's so fun about that is that I get to explore um, different stories. But I started, um, I really work in two areas. Um, so I'll, um, I work in sort of long form audio documentary and in uh, sort of intense uh, interviews focusing on particular topics and issues. So two areas of production. Uh, and my first uh, special here with um, WPPM was uh, a Philadelphia literary moment. And uh, that began as one special focusing on the poetry of literary giant and legendary activist Frances E.W. Harper, uh, who was known for her work in uh, abolition of slavery. She was uh, an American uh, who uh, uh, be began very early with her involvement in the abolition movement, um, a young uh, lady growing up in Baltimore. Uh, she was doing so as a person uh, who was living as a free African-American woman, but in an unfree state uh, in Maryland, and then began a career of activism, speaking poetry, became a novelist, and really established herself uh, in the temperance movement, as well as the abolitionist movement, uh, and also in the woman suffrage movement and the African-American suffrage movement and became an itinerant speaker moving around the country doing this type of work. She became a fixture on the Philadelphia activist scene, especially around women's issues and issues of African-American full access to citizenship. I was really excited to find ways to tell her story um, that were creative, that were um, artistic, really worthy of the type of person that she was. Um, Frances E.W. Harper actually ended up settling here in Philadelphia. She lived in a home in South Philly on Bainbridge Street. Uh, and during that time, uh, just had a very prolific career of over 60 years, uh, writing and addressing all of these issues as she did that. And so became one of those prominent voices. Uh, at any rate, I started with a poetry special, looking at her poetry and um, expanded the special uh, so, that, uh, so that it became a four-part series. 
the first episode, which aired in April of 2020, looked at her poetry. And then over the course of the year, uh, there was a special uh, that I was able to produce on her literature and then on her oratory. Uh, the oratory special was uh, timed just in time for election weekend 2020. And the timeliness of what she had to say, especially with regard to uh, how African Americans and other disenfranchised people uh, were treated within the political system. Uh, it was just so powerful. And then I was able to um, interview um, Utz McKnight, um, who um, was also um, a scholar on her work as well. And then I've gotten to do sort of in-depth, long-form uh, interviews uh, along with that, sort of in a separate area, focusing on, on issues like um, African Americans in the outdoors, um, women artists who are addressing social issues, uh, people here in Philadelphia working on social and cultural issues impacting folks all around the city. Uh, so it's been very exciting and I'm just so grateful for those opportunities. Yes, thank you so much for sharing more about that, Tara. It's, it's been amazing to sort of hear your work and, and also, um, again, sort of hear you kind of explore, you know, different topics and also maintain this, um, you know, this Tara Lake essence, which I think is so, so great and something that we all do very well is, you know, bring our personalities to these programs. AD, um, can you tell us a little bit about Theater in the Round? Uh, I think the name is very literal in that it covers uh, theater and all theater arts, which include, in my mind, opera, performance art, fringe performance art, uh, spoken word, comedy, cabaret, clowning, uh, striptease, burlesque. Um, and I've, I've had all of those artists and uh, backstage workers and directors and writers and theorists uh, on the show. And the one hope that I always had for this program was that uh, as I stated at the top, so much is still unknown about Philadelphia theater and about theater in general, despite the fact that it is uh, a billion dollar industry, a multi-billion dollar industry. And it seems to pale uh, in, in, you know, in comparison to getting attention as do music, film, or uh, streaming television. And I wanted to bring theater to the forefront. I wanted to clue people into theater's roots, theater's present, and theater's future. And that's locally, nationally, and internationally. But I think yeah. I've done it and do it. I think you do it very well um, as well. And we'll give you all an opportunity, to, of course, to to promo your shows after after we um, wrap the discussion. Tony J, though, let's please let's let's hear about. Seven Figure Hustle, which is also on Philly Cam TV. Yes, I have a TV and radio show. And the reason um, that I started and wanted to share, because I've had a, a, so many obstacles when it comes to finances. I had a mini stroke a while back and I couldn't do my regular job. So the government wants to give me $500 to live off of. My mortgage was 700 I'm like, okay, well, I got to do something different. So I made a, a, a goal and a vow to learn as much about finances as I possibly could. And since then I become, I'm, um, I'm getting my insurance license. Um, also have a certification for financial education. And I just had made so many mistakes with my kids, with my homes. I've lost a home. I've lost cars because I did not know how the financial rim worked. And, you know, in your neighborhood, you don't talk to rich people, they're not around, okay? So I just got on a mission to find out, to, to structure myself in the presence of people who knew what I needed to know, mm -hmm. because it was very painful. I mean, it was very painful. And the fact that radio, and like I said, one thing I like about radio, because you don't see the person's talking, so, you're 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 concentrating on what they're saying and not you know all the like all this stuff this is my office i have to excuse me i'm, I'm just redoing my office and 
with with radio, you just hear the knowledge, you hear what people are trying to push towards you. That's why I started the seven figure hustle because I had so many problems not understanding finances, not understanding, you know, insurance and 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 and, and different things that you actually need, not understanding how to put away for retirement, not understanding how to budget. And a lot of people have money and they don't know what to do. They think you can be rich to invest. You don't have to be. These are things we didn't know. So I started my show to share and help maybe someone else not make the same mistakes I made and to stop the generational curse in my family for being not knowing, you know, being poor, basically. Um, and that's why I started the show. Hmm. Thank you, Tony J. Well, uh, I know and I know listeners could also uh, agree that your show is so important to the station and, and to be heard. Um, and this is why I think community radio is so powerful is, yes. is because it's it's people with real everyday experiences mm -hmm. um, really taking the power into their own hands to, you know, tell their own stories and share information that they know is not only valuable to them, but to people like them. And, um, and for some of the other folks here in, on this panel as well, you know, communicating um, with your, your arts communities and knowing what, you know, what is lacking uh, in terms of, you know, media support, a platform for people to go and uh, share their work and, and, you know, between all of these programs, I see that happening and it's, it's so wonderful. So thank you all for sharing. And I wanna remind people who are just tuning in that this is Why Community Radio Matters, a community radio roundtable. And we're here joined by Ray Naylor of Philly Folk Scene on WPPM, Tara Lake, a special producer with us at WPPM, Tony J. Jones of Seven Figure Hustle, and A.D. Amorosi of A.D. Amorosi's Theater in the Round. I'm Allison Durham. And uh, we are really, really just getting into um, the importance of what places like Philly Cam um, mean to our communities. And I also, you know, as you all were talking, I have sort of really felt like it was a great time to move into another question, which um, is, you know, do you have a story to share about connecting with a listener or um, connecting with an artist in a way that only your your program on radio has allowed you to do? Um, you know, is is there um, an experience that you have or a story you have of, of really making that impact either with a listener or with an artist through your program? Right, go ahead, yeah. please. Yes. Well, I have two, but they're really short. Um, there's a performer, his name is Young S Sam James. And I had done a, uh, a YouTube show for four years called The Performing Songwriter. And he was on my show, which, by the way, also had played on Philly Cam. But anyway, um, he, uh, when I was researching him, I saw a photograph of him at an event. And it was a Philly Cam event. And I didn't know anything about Philly Cam. So if I hadn't seen that photograph, I probably wouldn't be here now. So that's my first story. Uh, the second story, another performer in Philadelphia area is called is John Flynn. And John was in the studio uh, where I interviewed him and he did some live live music. And I this was probably why, while a record was playing. And I said to John, you know, sometimes I, when I'm not focusing and I'm ready to do the station ID, a few times I've said things like WP, uh, like WMMR. And I, I figured out what I did and did the correct thing. So John goes, well, there's an easy way to remember WPPM, Peter, Paul, and Mary. So, <laughs> so I never forgot that. That's great. That's great. Anybody else have some stories or memories that come to mind? AD, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, the one, well, not the one thing, but among the things that the immediacy of PPM and uh, community radio, what they've allowed me to do. Uh, I can think of several different instances. Um, around uh, the time of 2020 and uh, the activist protests around the passings of uh, George Floyd, um, I remember speaking with more than a few black theater makers about their need to speak out and speak out <laughs> quickly uh we were able to talk about that 
at the time when a local group of female actors uh, had laid claims of misogyny and uh, wrongful casting at one of the companies, uh, one of the bigger companies in town, we were able to air their grievances. Um, when theater makers such as Harvey Firestein had something to say about growing up gay and making his voice heard. Uh, the show was there, is there. And I think that is something, uh, there is a connection between what a community radio station such as WPPM does and can do that you know, you might not get it in another station. I, I doubt you would. I mean, there's probably so much red tape between its programmers and its on-air personalities to cut through. And I feel as if that doesn't exist here. And that's uh, that was really <laughs> one of the reasons I wanted to be a part of WPPM's team to begin with. And I'm um, glad I'm here and, and I'm glad I'm going to be here for a while. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, AD. And and yeah, I mean, all of these programs are so impactful. Um, you know, it's definitely. I think we all can relate to that. Tony J, is is there a story that comes to mind where, where maybe uh, you've talked to an expert? Because uh, I know you talk to experts all the time, and you've got great panels on your show, um, really sharing crucial information about financial education. Is there an interview that really comes to mind where you you connected with somebody and? And we're able to broadcast a message that you know felt like a extremely necessary in a moment. Yeah, I did a show called Building Your Financial House. And the guest took you from A to Z, because my show said we take you from A to Z financially, show you how to travel all while feeling good. And what they did was I had a, a wealth builder, I had an insurance person, I had a documents person. And they went over the importance of the documents you need to have. And then they took it from there to the insurance that you need to have. And then I, um, the other desk, the other guest, I'm sorry, talked about the step by step. Um, and, you know, you sit down and you, and you write out what what lifestyle you want to live. And then the second column is what do you have? financially to make that happen, then the third column is what you need to have to make your first column um, happen. And I never did that. And from that show, I really got a lot of people connecting with me because a lot of people don't really, you know, it's called your, your analysis, your financial analysis. In order to build a financial house, house, these things need to be put in place and the average person don't know that's what they need to do. You have children how are they getting to school? What's going to happen to them? God forbid, if anything happened to you and the person you might hate them up most will be that person that gets your children because your children come with money. And that might sound a little cruel, but that's the truth. And we don't plan for these types of things. And a lot of people might say, well, you know, they'll go to my mom, but based on how old your mother is, can she handle you? you know, it's, it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of calls and emails and, People say, I really didn't know this. So um, that was my best show. I, that, I think that, that it took you step by step by step. Then, you know, it showed you how to do your credit. And then from your credit, you take that. And it's just so many little steps we need to take to build your financial house that um, I never knew until I started doing research. And it's called really being financial freedom. It's not really about being rich all the time. You first want to be financially free. Mm -hmm. And it's having your documents in place. And, and, and knowing, you know, what you need to do just in case your emergency fund, make sure your credit score, you're only supposed to spend 30% of any credit card. Most people don't know that to build your credit. So that show really opened up my mind and my thought process of, oh, okay, now I know. Cause my, I have a t-shirt line. I know better now, hashtag, I know better now. So yep. All that right. the best show. That is, yeah, that's super important. <laughs> I have a, 
I don't know if my mic is on, Allison. Oh, yes, you're good. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I was going to say, I have a story. Um, yes, Ray, please tell. Ray and AD inspired me. I, um, I'm a theater person. I'm a storyteller and a solo performer here in Philadelphia. And the way I found Philly Cam and WPPM was because I had to meet with the great promotions guru, Trey Edmonds. And um, <laughs> he took me to meet him at Philly Cam. And I was new to Philadelphia. Uh, this was... 2019 for Philadelphia Friends. And I was like, wait, wait, wait where's Philly Cam? What's Philly Cam? And he's like, yeah, that's why you need to meet me there. So that's actually how I found out about Philly Cam. Shout out to the great Jure Edmonds. Yeah. Um, it's like amazing. Uh, and uh, another thing I'm really proud of is having had the opportunity to interview Emily Ford. Emily Ford is like the first African American woman, first African American person, first woman first LGBTQ person, all those things. So first woman, first African-American person, first LGBTQ person to hike the Ice Age Trail, which is in Wisconsin in winter. It had, and she's only the second person ever to have done so. Um, and to hear her talk about, I mean, there were police called on her. She was camping in below zero degree temperatures. Wow. Uh, to hear her tell her amazing story and to talk about um, the courage that it took for her to do that. It was so inspirational and it was such um, an honor to share that story. So those are my two stories, Jere Edmonds, Emily Ford, for yeah, sure. Yeah, love it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much all for, for sharing, um, you know, those, those amazing stories about how your shows have, have connected both with audiences and with com community members and experts um, and, you know, basically proven themselves to be an extremely helpful and, and important platform. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about why community radio matters and why WPPM is such a great place to do so. Be right back. All right, we're back, and this is Why Community Radio Matters, a community radio roundtable from Philly Cam's WPPM 106.5 FM, of course, Philly Cam Community Radio. Uh, we're streaming live at phillycam.org forward slash listen. Of course, we're on the FM at 106.5 FM. We are streaming also to YouTube right now at Philly Cam, and we are live to TV. So we are all over the place right now. Um, we'll be here till 5 p.m. talking about why community radio is so important in Philadelphia specifically and how our programmers are doing great work with their shows to connect with audiences and make a difference. I'm Allison Durham, and I want to pose another question to the group and you know, feel free to jump in if, if you've got a thought that comes to mind right away. Um, I really wanted to give you all the opportunity to think about um, a lesson or lessons that you've learned in producing your shows, you know, in some cases for years, some folks are a little bit newer, but what's some, what's a takeaway that you've, um, you've gotten from this experience, either, you know, doing your show, um, even in, you know, a more independent setting, like I know Tara has and, or, or connecting with people in the studio, all of these things that we know community radio is is uh, really known for, obviously with COVID, it's been a little bit tougher, mm. but we've learned so much in this time as well, right? So I wanted to give you all the opportunity to, to talk about that. Any takers? I'll go. <laughs> all right, Tony J, please, yes. Well, I, I, I've learned a, a lot about um, Philly Cam. I got into Philly Cam um doing a friend a favor um because she had paid for a course and she couldn't take it and she didn't want to lose her money but you know, I, I think it's very important that we we have somewhere where we can express ourselves um don't have to worry about being judged you know someone's judging you or um you can produce what's in your heart what's on your mind you can share things you normally wouldn't share on mainstream without being censored. Um, and the staff at Philly Cam is amazing because like I had told Allison before, I never knew I could even do this because 
as you guys make I'm I'm very nervous. You know, I'm not in front of the camera, but sometimes you have to get pet go through your comfort zone, come out your comfort zone and do it because I was so so passionate about getting this across because I ran into a lot of people, most everybody I knew had problems with finances. So being a part of Philly came and 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 the fact that there is a place in Philadelphia that you know that you can express yourself and can be taught how to produce and to be taught how to be every part of it. I mean, I've learned everything. I never knew any of this until I came to Philly came and get a chance to work on other people's um, visions uh, and make, and help their visions come true as well. So I don't know if I answered the question correctly, but that's what, you know, I'm, I'm very, very passionate when it comes to Philly Cam. Philly Cam, I always tell people it kind of saved my life because I was in a really dark place when I came to Philly Cam and coming down there and meeting so many different people um I, everybody know me know i go to therapy there's no shame in the game because mental health is so important and mental health that was part of the reason why my finances was the way they were because mm -hmm. with the stress of not knowing how to manage money you know and when i when i went to philly cam and and, and so this is what i want to do they embraced me so i really really love the fact that um there's a place that we can go and to express ourselves on that level thank you so much for sharing that 20 j yeah i mean um well i'll just put it out there that philly cam staff love you too <laughs> and you. we love all of our members it's it's um really a special thing to be able to to be in such a creative space um you know whether we're physically there or not there um and it's been amazing to watch everyone grow um, any other thoughts about lessons learned in doing the show? Ray? Mm -hmm. See, I wrote this stuff down, so that's why. Nice. I <laughs> yeah. And that's a lesson to be learned. <laughs> that's, a le that's a lesson to learn. <laughs> okay. um, well, when I did that uh, radio show at a Widener University in the early 80s, I just kind of winged it. And surprisingly, a lot of times it came out fine. But um, when I went through the training here at Philly Kim, one of the things that came out was that we should do a rundown. I'm thinking, what the heck's a rundown? Um, and it's a plan of how you're going to plan that particular show. Um, and one of the things uh, that I learned pretty quickly is, is uh, my show is two hours. And uh, after my show is a show called Crack Radio with Sean Timmons and Fergie Carey. And I never wanted to end the, so end the show on a song where somebody was, you know, it was a song, words and music. I didn't want it to be cut off. Well, that did happen. So I've ch I just changed my mind, and I, I, always, I always end now with an instrumental that way. When 5 o'clock comes up, Sean can fade out on the instrumental. Um, I think the learning how to plan the show uh, was the, one of the main things. The other thing was interviews. Now, I've probably done th over 300 interviews from 1980 to today on various formats. Um, but this helped me hone that um you know and actually i did some research on interviews and and, and what was important if you're the person doing the interviews and for example um once you ask the question be quiet <laughs> shut up and let the person talk you know um so that's been great that i've been able to uh, continue to learn how to how to do interviews too Very cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I, I'll just add and just say that uh, I do think, you know, that's one thing that we, we, um, we foster seem seemingly foster very well at, at Philly Cam are people who are great at interviewing. I'm always so amazed by our programmers and all these amazing conversations that come from programs. AD, did you have something to, to add? I do. You know, when I started uh, at PPM, part of my goal was to expand the palette of what I did beyond my my writings, uh, local, nationally, and internationally. The one thing in doing that, though, with all that, you know, the extra time and attention you can devote to an artist, you know, you uh, I almost had to relearn and retailer how I form my questions in a more conversational sense because you know you don't uh, even though we can record and edit uh on Streamyard, you don't you know 
you want to keep a conversation on radio as alive as possible and as direct as possible. So uh, I had to learn to tailor my interviews around that. And also, I have to say, coming into the pandemic and utilizing StreamYard, as I do on a, a weekly basis, it is really a positive boon to what we do as uh, radio producers. Uh, it, it, it opens the world up in ways that you couldn't imagine just on the phone. Uh, you know, where connections are dodgy or even, you know, in person where you have to rely on people getting there on time. So, uh, you know, I, I, I learned a lot so far and, and keep learning all the time at DBM. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think uh, there are like two different areas of things that I've definitely learned. Um, the first has been really technical about tools and things of that nature. Um, as a before the series that I mentioned about Francis E. W. Harper, I did a lot of um, audio theater, uh, and I had to uh, learn about how I find uh, how, where do I go to find special effects? How do I employ those special effects? Um, how do I infuse elements of audio theater into this documentary approach? I like to use a lot of music in my uh, productions as well. And I had to figure out how to source that music and how to make sure that I was on the right side of the law and things of that nature. Uh, so there have been many technical things with uh, just mixing and sound effects and the theater aspects and all of those things in the show that um, I, producing with Philly Cam has, with producing with WPPM under Philly Cam has given me the opportunity to do and to learn. I think the other thing is the people, um, learning from all of the uh, producers here at WPPM. Um, and I think we've heard, for example, Ms. Tony J, um, the passion behind the work that she's doing, um, to hear uh, the same from, from Ray and from AD, to hear that um, people who are doing this work at WPPM are doing it uh, from a place of uh, pure passion and a place of commitment to uh, to listeners and commitment to the community and to the craft. And as a result of that, you get to learn all, all types of things on a regular basis, um, just from people who bring such a beauty and such a passion to what they do. Um, even right now in this conversation, I'm just so um, um, deeply inspired by what I am hearing here and what I am also able to learn. I think that all of us are probably having like percolating moments right now. Um, and that's the beauty of what you learn working with WPPM. It's, it's ongoing. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing everyone. Yeah, it's, I, I think that um, the amazing thing is as soon as you're um, in a community, you know, of, of producers here where, where people are really coming from all different interests, you know, all different backgrounds, of course, um, you know, that um, is going to create a, an environment where, of course, we're going to we're going to be constantly inspired by each other. And I think that in a lot of ways, like that is really also the beauty of community radio is that we are an eclectic group of people, you know, coming with with all, um, you know, all um, yes. stories and being able to exchange those and, and also do it, you know, because we all we all have this sort of common desire, right? To um, to connect with our our neighbors through the airwaves and be a part of something greater. And so that's that's a really amazing thing. Um, I do want to make sure folks know who might just be tuning in um, that we are right now live with Why Community Radio Matters, a community radio roundtable presented by Philly Camp. And we are live to WPPM 106.5 FM, Philly Cam TV, also streaming on YouTube, uh, on Philly Cam's YouTube account. And um, you can also catch us streaming live at WPPM.org. Um, you'll be able to find the audio stream there. We'll be here for just a little bit longer till 5 p.m. And as a reminder, it's a really special day for Philly Cam and WPPM. It is our fifth anniversary today. 
Yes, and it's also National Community Media Day. So we're having this conversation with our producers to um, celebrate that and talk a little bit about why uh, Philly Cam and WPPM are such important places. I'm joined by Ray Naylor of Philly Folk Scene, also Tara Lake, a special producer here at WPPM, Tony J. Jones of Seven Figure Hustle, and A.D. Amorosi of A.D. Amorosi's Theater in the Round. I'm Allison Durham. With this said, we're gonna move towards kind of the end of our conversation. And I wanted to allow you all the, the opportunity to maybe look ahead and um, you know reflect on what you are excited about in the future, whether you know it be uh, for Ray, you know, you're focusing on music, but of course I know you'll always be a part of the WPPM family. For for other people, I know you have projects currently in the works. What's everyone excited about um, going into you know, the next year or even the next years here at WPPM and what can listeners look forward to and, and um, you know, help fuel by supporting? Well, I'll say even though my show is stopping, <laughs> I, I, not the show, me, um, I'm going to continue my membership with Philly Cam because you never know. And, um, you know, I've done uh, the whole video thing and I learned how to edit video and stuff and uh, there may be something else I might want to do that, you know, Philly Cam may be interested in running and who knows, who knows what, so I'm going to keep the options uh, open. Nice. Other thoughts? Yes. Along, AD here, uh, along with creating some of my own radio dramas uh, and theatricals, stay tuned. Uh, the one thing I would like to do with this show, and especially now that we're back to live staging, is I would like to be able to take theater in the round out of my home office and out of even WPPM's studio environment and into other locations. I want to travel uh, and take uh, and record shows in other spaces, other theaters, other performance areas, and allow the vibrancy of a room filled with actors and directors and backstage people to uh, come through on air. Uh, I, I have an idea as to how that can happen, and I'm anxious and curious to make it so. Very cool, very cool. Yes, that's an amazing thing to look forward to. We, we really, um, I think we're all excited about uh, getting in deeper into our communities and, you know, broadcasting from, from uh, you know, different locations and, and uh, mixing it up in that way, I think would bring a lot to what we can do here at WPPM. Awesome. Yeah, Tony J, are you looking forward to anything in, in the coming years? Yes, yes. Number one, um, honored to still be an ambassador of Philly Cam. Um, my goal for 2022 is to get 100 new members for Philly Cam. Um, I also want to start a nonprofit with finances. I want to do some live interviews showing people the step by step because a lot of people, I'm a visual person. So, you know, I want to do, you know, live um, testimonies where people actually learn what they needed to do and what the outcome is because a lot of people think that it's hard, but it's really not. Because, you know, if you think about it, if you go to college, you automatically start your adulthood in debt. It's designed that way. And some people don't even get a job, but then within six months, they want you to start paying that loan back. So you start off, a lot of people start off in debt. And with that being said, I'm looking forward to more interviews with car dealerships with 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 with, with real estate um investors and you know and investments everything there is to do with finance i want an ex i'm um, looking i put um i reached out to experts to come onto the show and most of them have agreed and so i'm looking forward to um 2022 and as i say my goal is to bring on 100 new people my goal last time was but only more than 76 so I'm revamping my um, debt and 
and continue to be an ambassador for yes. um, Philly Ham, and WPPM. And in fact, my son was the, had one of the first shows on WPPM. Um, that's one of the reasons why I came to Philly Ham for my kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so everybody has, you know, on take, if that's the right word. And my show is raw because I had, I don't, I'm not verb, I'm not really good verbiage, but because I don't give a mm when nobody think about me, I don't get embarrassed and you can't hurt my feelings. My family can hurt my heart. I put it out there because a lot of people, because of, of, of something like me, how I stutter or whatever, don't really get what they need. So I'm getting, letting people know you got to come out your comfort zone. It is what it is, but finances is like breathing. Is breathing, then there's your finances. So with that being said, my show is raw. So you take it, the, the information comes out raw, just like it is. And hopefully people can say, wow, that's like an everyday person like me. You know, she went through hard times and she's she's doing it, you know. So that's my goal and for 2022. <laughs> All right, very nice. Any other thoughts? I've got one more question to pose to y'all. Um, yes. I'll jump in. Um, mm -hmm. Allison, yeah, I'm excited about, at, on the immediate horizon, I have uh, two specials coming up. Uh, so mm -hmm. one special is a bonus to uh, the special that I have running during, um, during the festival, which focuses on uh, Mercy Hospice and the amazing work that they are doing to uh, help women in recovery here in Philadelphia. Uh, to serve those women. I'm really excited about that. That's coming up very soon. Um, another special uh, that is now in production is looking at the experience of um, Haitian immigrants uh, coming to the United States and experiencing the Darien Gap and this relatively new migration experience through uh, South and Central America. And we also have the uh, perspectives of Mauritanian immigrants uh, and just their experience here in the United States um, and the difficulty that they face trying to get refugee and as asylee status. Uh, and then uh, third, uh, sort of on, on the farther horizon, uh, is a series of, um, uh, well, actually, what, what would I call it? A collection of short series that are uh, really focused on narrative, creative, theatrical, and storytelling uh, uh, perspectives, one. Uh, so that's what's coming up in the next year. I'm super excited about that. Looking forward to working with Alice. Awesome. Yes, very awesome. cool. Very cool. Yes. Awesome. I'm sorry. No, no, no. This is great. I I love to hear about what people have in mind for the for the future here, and I'm really looking forward to that. And and that is uh, one thing that listeners can, of course, also look forward to and keep their ears out for. Um, and also, you know, one reason why listeners should absolutely consider supporting WPPM for years to come to support programming like this. Um, you know, we've made it five years. Let's see, at least another five years. Um, so folks can head over to phillycam.org forward slash support to donate to WPPM. And we'll be looking to raise money uh, until Giving Tuesday, which is November 30th. We have a $5,000 goal for our fifth anniversary, and we'll continue to promote that over the next month. So um, people can, can um, you know, make sure to get the info on how they can support WPPM. Um, with that said, we just have a few minutes left in the program, and um, I wanted to really quickly ask one question. It's okay if it seems too large to, you know, answer briefly, if maybe one or two people want to jump in. Again, this uh, month's theme for PPM Fest is community media as community care. So I wanted to offer anyone the opportunity to jump in and share um, how they believe maybe WPPM has shown up for our communities and exhibited community care. Um, if anybody feels compelled, you know, please, we would love to hear from you. AD? Uh, one thing uh, of which I was not aware uh, and I heard it from uh, the cast of uh, Mornings at Seven, which is an all uh, uh, 12 of American film, television, and theaters, uh, most prominent uh, over 65 actors and actresses. And they told me something about how 80% 
of actors' equity was put out of work uh, during the time of COVID. And I'm sh as much as I'm sure other industries suffered, I found that to be a devastating, devastating number. And uh, just beyond, you know, it stopped my breath when I considered that, you know, that percentage. And the one thing they told me that I thought was really both kind, uh, something they did not need to say, was how programming such as Theater in the Round was getting the word out to the general public and the theater going public as well that live performance is back and needs your attention and i think if any of us can reach out to our audiences and remind them that every business model needs financial uh, attention yes uh, that just struck me. That's all. It's not, uh, I'm sure uh, all of you here today reach your audiences, niche audiences, uh, to be sure, um, in very particular ways. I, I was just touched uh, by the fact that uh, people I work with and people I work for and community I, communities I work for recognize that and are looking forward uh their cause to be publicized yes yes thank you so much well we're gonna start to wrap up here and i did want to make sure everyone gets a chance to shout out your show let people know when they can listen and where they can find any episodes um somebody just wants to go ahead and and take the baton you're welcome to right away sure why not mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i wanted to mention um i was at a music conference and you and we, I did, had a recorded show during my show, and and Allison, we did a live thing during the conference. Mm -hmm. I, I I gathered several uh, artists uh, in my uh, hotel room, <laughs> and and the thing I wanted, the point I wanted to make, the appreciation that people have. In my case, uh, artists who whose music I play or who I interview, how appreciative they are, and that's all about community radio. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a really, really good thing. And I, I also wanted to say real quick, uh, the thing about radio in general, you know, when you have TV, which I've done some of that, the, it's the director or the producer that shows you what you see. In a radio, people see things, but they see it in their mind. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's very, very uh, cool. Um, my show, as well as some others, are on a thing called Mixcloud. And I up upload all my shows as well as my interviews to a thing called Mixcloud, mixcloud.com. All right. Tara, where can people folk find your work? Yes, um, I have a special uh, that is airing as part of the festival uh, on Monday. Uh, let's see. So it aired first uh, on Monday the 18th, and it will air again on Monday the 26th. Um, so you can listen in Monday the 26th at 5 o'clock for um, an exciting feature of organizations here in Philadelphia who are, uh, and in the Delaware Valley who are doing amazing work on behalf of our neighbors and demonstrating just um, fantastic community care for children living with blindness, for kids learning about music, for um, young people experiencing homelessness. Uh, it's just um, an exciting, I'm missing somebody, but, uh, oh, oh yes, and, and for our neighbors who need uh, nutritional therapy. Uh, and so uh, it's just an exciting show. I hope that you will join. Uh, that's Monday the 26th uh, from 5 to 6 p.m. here on WPM. Uh, and another way to um, keep up with all of the previous shows that I've done, I uh, do post them on YouTube. The fastest way to get there is to go to my website, which is taralake.com. Um, so it's just T-A-R-A-L-A-K-E. Dot com and uh, there you can click on the YouTube icon and it will take you to the channel. You can listen to everything there. All right, thanks so much. I'll just shout out Tony J. You can catch Seven Figure Hustle um, at eight to nine p.m. here on WPPM on Tuesdays and ADMROC four to five p.m. with Theater in the Round. 
Well, Rap, thanks so much for being with us all and uh, happy PPM Fest and happy fifth anniversary to WPPM. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm. Yeah.